Welcome back to CAS 103, Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dallas, Oregon. Mrs. Hewitt, instructor. This week is the week that the course takes a format change. We are into week three. We will be using the textbooks. You need to have already purchased a textbook to go with your Windows version. If you're not sure what version of Windows you have, there's a video back in week one that lets you know which, you know, kind of how to find out which version you have. If you don't have a book in hand at this point, you probably need to go over to the bookstore at the campus in the Dells and purchase one. You will not have time to order it online unless you pay for like overnight shipping. So given that, Windows keeps getting updated. It's a Microsoft thing. They like to bring out new versions fairly frequently. So right now we have Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10 tracks going. Windows 7 may eventually go away. Windows, who knows what they'll call it, may show up again. This will change throughout time. The video may not be updated in that time zone. So when you get on here, look to see what you're offered, find the one that is yours, and then proceed with those directions. Now this is Windows 8 and 8.1, any of the Windows 8 version. You only need one book. You will only be doing one track. You are not doing them all unless you opted to. You will find your unit goals. Those are being updated with the course as we go right now. So when you open that up, you will see the current goals. The summary basically talks to you about what you needed to have accomplished. You needed to have read the materials and viewed the video. You need to have done the vocabulary, and there will be a vocabulary assignment almost every week from here on out. That assignment is to help you learn to understand the computer terms that are used. If you're hanging out with a bunch of computer users and they sort of talk, it's like a foreign language. It's sort of a geek speak type thing. So by creating your own glossary, your own dictionary, mastering some of the more common terms, Hopefully that will make you more comfortable in the conversations around computers. You will have completed and uploaded a WordPad project. Now please be very, very careful with this project. There is a notepad on Windows machines that we're not using. And some of you may have bought Microsoft Office that has Word, just plain Word. That's not what we're using either. We're using Note. Or we, excuse me, let me re-say that. We're using WordPad only. It is an accessory. There are videos to show you how to find it. And you need to save it in a specific file format. So you're going to need to do that. We'll look at that here in a minute. You will have also completed and uploaded the paint project. That needs to be a drawing, not a modern scrambled art type thing. You need to actually have shapes and colors and things like that. So I can see you've explored the tools. And again, there's a video to help you with some of that. You will be doing a journal for each week. So you will have completed that. And you will have done your forum posting and replied to at least one other student. Now your basic response to my question needs to be at least 50 words and 100 would really probably be closer to what you should have. Your reply to another student, again, needs to be at least 30 words. It needs to be on target. There is a video about form replies like, oh, cool, yeah, I like that too, me too, types of things do not count for that. It needs to be a substantial statement when you do replies or when you do posts. So that's kind of, again, if you're not sure, go back and review the videos. They are there for your use. As you come down here, you're going to see there's some required things. So there's some instructions. That's where this video will be. There's some intro for WordPad and Paint assignments and file formats that will hopefully walk you through what you need to do, getting it saved into the correct file format. Learning to save something in a different file format than what the computer magically does can be huge on down the road when you're doing other things. Um, so you're going to learn to do that this week, and that video will help you with that. There's a paint tutorial just to kind of help show you how paint works because for some of you it's going to be real intuitive and for others of you it may not be. Then if you're using Windows 7, you're going to use these resources. If you're using Windows 8, 8.1, you're going to be using these resources. And if you're using Windows 10, you'll be using these resources. 
Then under that are the assignments, what you actually have to do. Now, there's a vocabulary resource here that's a link. You can use your textbook glossary. You can use the web link I've provided that Mouse is sitting on. You can do a Google search to find the word. There are two versions of this. You do one of the two. This is in Office Word. It's obviously the ideal. If you have it on your machine, use it for this. However, if you don't have it on your machine, I do have it in more of a text format. It doesn't have the nicer formatting. It's going to be harder to work with, but it'll work. You can use it in WordPad to complete the assignment. And then you have your directions. So the directions will basically take you through what you need to do here. It does mention that paint needs to be saved as a JPEG or JPEG. And that up here for your word pad, it needs to be saved. At, and I might have to add that. I don't see it. Yep, here it is. TXT file. It was there. That those are not what are called default. Those are not what the computer automatically does. So you're going to have to follow the directions in the videos to make sure that happens. Then below that are where you actually upload it. So once you get that vocabulary completed, you're going to upload it. You're going to open this up. It's overdue right now because obviously it's not set up for that. But there'll be an upload right here. You'll click on it and you'll drag and drop the file like you've learned to do for Moodle already, so you know how to upload at this point. You'll upload your paint project. You will upload your journal, and we'll talk a little bit about what you have to do. It's a learning reflection. So as you go in here, you'll notice it needs to be at least 150 words or more. You need to tell me three themes in the unit or three things you learned. Tell me two ways that you will use those. How are you going to apply this? And how or what would you teach one thing you would teach someone else if you had the chance? Now, you don't have to actually go find a victim and teach this to them. Although a lot of people do show their husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, kids, neighbors, parents, whatever, how to do something. You don't have to. And then there's a plus one. And that is the last step of using one of this week's vocabulary words in a sentence to help explain what you learned this week. It's not a part of the other three, so you don't run it into the others. It is a, another whole line. Do not repeat a generic sentence that was used in the vocabulary assignment. Make it personal about your learning. This starts in week three. You do need to be... Underline, bold, highlight, color, whatever your vocabulary word, so that when I pop your paper open, I can see one, two, three themes. What I learned, one, two, three. How I will use, one, two. What I would teach, boom. Sentence, -da 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 -da. red, yellow, green, purple, pink, whatever you like, highlighted word, underline, bold, whatever. And it's very easy for me to go through it and see one, two, three, one, two, one sentence, vocabulary word highlighted. That brings us to the next part. This is make each question a paragraph, allowing at least one line between it and the next question. Uh, word some, uh, web sometimes steals paragraphs or sentence spacing. You may want to put two in just to be sure. If you write it Microsoft Word, which is your fir my first choice, um, you can use WordPad, you can use Notepad, you can use WordPerfect. However, you cannot use anything else if you have something else you've purchased. Those are the only ones I'm going to be able to open and read. So if you use something different, we're going to be out of luck. My first two choices are either Word or WordPad. You do need to use correct standard English, no texting shortcuts, complete sentences, good grammar, capitals, use a capital I when you're talking about yourself, periods, question marks, etc. Do proofread, do go back over, and do run spell checker. Okay. And then there's a grading scale down here that will let you look at that. Now, one thing to know, no late work will be accepted for journals. And... No work submitted on time will result in a score of a zero, and it will stay a zero. It will not get upgraded. 
very, 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 very rarely will I ever make an exception to that rule. It's going to be like a life-threatening type of situation um, to even have a conversation. So make sure you get that done on time. And you cannot do a reflection of what you've learned before you've done the work. It's real obvious to me if you've tried that. If you turn this journal in and there's no other work completed, there's no credit. You cannot just sort of <clears throat> guess your way through what you might have learned and kind of pull off this generic ramble and then turn it in with no other work to support it. So just some things to think about as you're doing that journaling. And then there are forums. Usually there's one forum each week. This week has three forums because there's a little different question for 7, 8, and 10. So I want you to make sure that you pick the right forum and you're replying to each other there. Hopefully this video will help you get going this week and you're off and running.